Before we start this video, I would like to let you know that I have created a new Discord channel, which you can join uh, at the link or at the QR code, and it's uh, free, uh, no paid content, and all are welcome. So, <clears throat> the book Animal Farm, written by George L. Orwell, allegedly, it gives us a explanation uh allegorically anyway of the farm that we live on in it there were a group of animals mainly pigs <clears throat> who got all the other animals on the farm together to stage a rebellion essentially against the authority of the farmer because according to pigs the farmer was only raising them to feed on them so when the pigs took over mainly being the bad pigs because they successfully eliminated the any other contending voice essentially uh, to what they wanted well they basically turned into the farmer themselves and began raising and feeding off of the rest of the farm animals so this is an explanation essentially of the world that we live in today where we are in fact the animals on the farm we are neither the pigs nor the farmer most of us anyway some are and those that are should definitely be worried about the farm animals figuring it out one of the primary elements that you can see as a correlation between our farm and the uh, normal concept of what a farm is is the fence and of course you'll find the fence on both farms and ranches because technically speaking a ranch is a cattle farm whereas a farm itself is for agriculture like uh, wheat and things like that now this particular scenario was brought attention to in the uh, famous or infamous depending on how you look at it event down at the southern border with the alleged individual called a Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or AOC which was a rather famous or infamous photo shoot at a fenced in area giving you an idea of the sort of ranch farm that we are living on you can also find these fences used in many other places specifically with the intention of controlling the movement of human beings whereas the fences on ranches are used to control the movement of cattle mainly not to keep out foxes or wolves or anything like that because they won't stop them those animals just crawl under the fence as anybody knows if you have a pet dog and you build a fence around the yard they usually dig underneath it the fences are primarily for livestock to keep them in of course we've seen fences up being put up around dc recently in this period but you find fences under uh, prohibited areas all over the place but the possibly the most obvious correlation between our culture so-called and the cattle ranch is the cattle guard which is a series of metal bars that are put across the road to mimic the apparent presence of a fence area and that is the basis for the crosswalk which we all use in our controlled movement patterns and we don't step beyond for fear of the repercussions of doing so it is a cattle guard of course on the ranch you also have all of these large barriers when you're talking about the pens or movement passage through pens you have these interesting looking sort of gate gate uh entrance entry areas where you have one gate that opens and then you close it and then you have the second gate that opens and you close that and that is used for the entry of cattle into their pens and then naturally inside of barns and whatnot you have rails and other guards that control movement and control people you find the correlation to these particular elements in turn style Turnstiles are very similar, if not almost, a, if not a human version anyway, of the entrance to a cattle pen. 
And you also find this element replicated at airports where you have all of these barriers and lines and methods to arbitrarily control the movement of human beings. And then, of course, you have the uh, well-known, especially for anyone who flies, a scanning device where you have to hold your hands up and do all of this, these excessive movements and all this other nonsense that seems a little bit ridiculous considering <clears throat> we've all been through metal detectors and things like that where none of this extra stuff is required. Well, the airports are essentially practicing the techniques of the cattle ranch, treating us like livestock. This can easily be found in the highway system as well, in which we have to navigate through many barriers and obstructions that are put in place specifically with the purpose of controlling the movement of the human cattle. That is the idea. We are not essentially in their eyes responsible. We are all sheep or cows. As they see it, we all have to be herded to one place or another and the primary mechanism for doing that obviously is barriers physically restricting movement which we follow along with blindly and usually well most of us anyway apparently because if most of us didn't then we would obviously tear these structures down and we would say we are not cattle and you can't do this to us but considering the entire globe is controlled in this manner it becomes incredibly obvious that we are all living on a human cattle farm you can't go anywhere unless the, except the places that you're told. You see this with roundabouts. Roundabouts take that circular pattern of controlled movement that they use with cattle. And the reason why they do that with cattle is to avoid stampedes. Because if you have a single blockage, the cattle will stampede. But when you put a, a, a circular thing, the cattle keep moving. And so they don't stop, they don't stampede, and they don't pile up against each other into essentially a meat grinder. That is the same concept behind a roundabout, and it is directly derived from the cattle farm, as is the cattle guard crosswalk. Another element that you can find on the cattle farm ranch is the wind direction finding turbine. That will help you identify whether or not storms are coming, things like that. And... <laughs> Naturally, we have all of these wind farms, which are, to we're told, obviously, that is a lie, that they energ uh, conduct or energize uh, things with power. They are, in fact, the same thing as a cattle ranch, and it's sort of in your face. You're living on a ranch, and you can't do anything about it, essentially. That's the idea. They do love to do these jokes. Basically, uh, sort of subconscious mental programming you know get in line naturally the enforcers that make you get in line are the sheepdogs every ranch or farm has a sheepdog some uh, as we're told are designed to keep away predators but mainly they are used to control through threat of force the movement of cattle and ironically enough the police units actually do have canine units that are used to control human behavior and the police are very well proud of their sheepdog moniker in which the sheep referenced are human beings. The sheep are not animals, they are humans. And other humans put on uniforms and run around calling themselves the sheepdogs. And they use their loud sirens just like a loud dog bark and flashing lights just like the nipping and, of course, they use quote-unquote non-lethal force in order to coerce us into behavior, as does a sheepdog do the same thing with sheep and cows, which I suppose it wouldn't be a sheepdog if it was going after cows. <laughs> Naturally, the sheepdogs are one step in the cattle ranch where you have then the shepherd and the priests and pastors as we all know think about that word pastor pastoral they call their congregation the flock of course they would probably like to call them the herd but they don't get that far on the nose anyway and naturally you also have cattle that get brands they have their numbers and their tags 
and their identification that is put on them. As do humans. We all have identification cards with pro specific uh, uh, correlating numbers. Some people even have those numbers tattooed onto their body. So yes, those are the exact same tactics and strategies to brand cattle, essentially claiming ownership over livestock property. Now, when it comes to reaping the proverbial harvest of the human cattle, anyway, or the butchering, as it were, things don't take much of a different turn from the cattle farm. But one of the most lucrative forms of, uh, of what they reap from the human uh, livestock are organs. Human organs are sold, bought and sold and used for all kinds of different things. And then naturally you also have the blood donation, which is a method to reap the value from the human livestock, which then go to blood banks. Think about that word, blood bank. Of course, recently we've also had these this uh, thing about human meat consumption and cannibalism that's been popping up over the past decade. And then we all know about that. Well, maybe not all of us, but a lot of people anyway should or, or well, maybe shouldn't. But either way, there are a lot of people that know about the infamous or famous event, whichever side you're on, of course, with, uh, again, the Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez character who wore the uh, Tax the Rich design dress, which looked uh, oddly similar to a certain... Um, food brand <laughs> which may or may not have uh, extra uh, parts from the ranch in it of course another element of the ranch is the force feeding of medicine that is required for animals and that medicine is generally speaking hidden in the food that is consumed by those animals because otherwise they won't take it of course they are just uh, Sometimes they're forced shot uh, through injection or whatnot. But naturally, we do not control our food supply, and we have a lot of different methods that we eat from, which is uh, similar to a food trough, such as the buffet table. Those are the sort of feeding grounds that are designed for us, where we don't actually control what goes into that food, and we don't know what goes into it, and we're not allowed to either. Just as with animals, they are fed whatever. Uh, they're told to or forced to basically because uh, there's no other option right if you don't want to eat it then you just starve because there's nothing else that you're allowed to have and naturally you also find this with uh, rearing of children and infants where they want you to use these chemically engineered formulas which they in turn also equally give to livestock with zero choice in whether or not you want can do that or not <clears throat> naturally you also have the lasso on the ranch that's used for controlling bulls and runaway animals. You also have the rider's crop, which mainly speaking is used for horses, and we don't really use horses that much anymore. Most people uh, have different ways of herding cattle. Some people still use horses, and the rider's crop is used for driving the horse, uh, as along with stirrups, of course. Then you have the cattle prod, and that is used for controlling cattle movement and all of these things can be found replicated in our society used upon us such as with the handcuffs that is a representative of the lasso and that is an old technique and method to control people's behavior of course you also have the nightstick which is uh, similar to the cattle prod but also the rider's crop it's used to essentially beat into submission the human livestock that the sheep dogs uh, so-called uh, police uh, thugs go around and force into compliance. Of course, money can also be seen as another form of a control mechanism for the human livestock, which might be harder to find on the ranch itself, since uh, most things in that case form are physical. Of course, we also have arbitrary paperwork controls that is used to control the human livestock through uh, behavior manipulation. However, this concept takes a much more, mm, shall we say, um, odd or creepy uh, 
disturbing turn, we'll look at something called interspecific pregnancy. From Wikipedia, interspecific pregnancy, literally pregnancy between species, also called interspecies pregnancy or xenopregnancy, is the pregnancy involving an embryo or fetus belonging to another species than the carrier. Strictly, it excludes the situation where the fetus is a hybrid of the carrier and another species, thereby excluding the possibility that the car carrier is the biological mother of the offspring. Strictly, interspecific pregnancy is also distinguished from endoparasitism, where parasite offspring grow inside the organism of another species, not necessarily in the womb. It has no natural, no natural occurrence, but can be achieved artificially by transfer of embryos of one species to the womb of another. So basically think like a, a liger or a, um, a donkey, or is it, a, no, it's a mule. Yeah, which is, those are cross, that's crossbreeding. But if you imagine us as livestock, then of course, yes, you would look into things like crossbreeding and all of this other stuff. Because uh, in the context of our modern society where pastors look at us as their flock, and sheep dogs that put on uniforms and go around beating everyone, uh, nipping at them and, and um, barking with their sirens. Well, then, yeah, they uh, they wouldn't see us as anything any different than than any other animal, as we see uh, a lot of our livestock, where we do all kinds of things to try and uh, figure out what else we can. Uh, breed essentially potential applications potential applications include carrying human fetuses to term as a potentially yet ethically controversial alternative to human surrogate mothers or artificial uteri for gay male couples mothers with damaged uteri or heterosexual couples do not want to risk childbirth and here this person is explaining possibly one of the creepiest things you could find when it comes to human livestock in a positive manner and that is something you find everywhere across the internet basically is this anti-human human cattle perspective and also pro greco roman uh, structure it would also provide a sober drug-free and non-smoking carrier that is less expensive than human surrogates there's all your labels of course for animals, it could be a valuable tool in preservation programs of endangered species, providing a method of ex situ conservation. It could also avail for recreation of extinct species. This person is is clearly arguing in favor of one of the creepiest things that you can do to a, to a human being, and it's specifically in the context of human beings that should be noted noted here, because this what they're talking about doesn't have to only apply to human beings, but the writer is applying it only to human beings. As though human beings were, and it's to. Can you imagine? That's the got to be the primary difference here. Is that can you imagine trying to explain to a cow uh, what you were doing to the cow and why it was good and all that? Most people would do that. Some people might, as sort of like a soothing thing. And I would say probably most people who have actual livestock are not as disgustingly perverse and, and, and wicked as the people that see humans as livestock. But they have they have to explain to us why all the creepy bad things they're doing are actually good. Because once individuals wake up and realize exactly what the implications of this is, well, the farm is going to be under new management. Causes of failure. Immunology, immunologic, immunologic, well, that's hard to say immunologically an embryo or fetus is of an interspecific pregnancy would be equivalent to xenografts rather than allografts putting a higher demand on just gestational immune tolerance in order to avoid an immune reaction toward the fetus some mice experiments indicate an imbalance between the th1 and th2 helper cells with predominance of th1 cytokines however other mice experience indicate that an immune response towards xenofetuses does not belong to classic classical cytotoxic t lymphocyte or natural killer cell pathways all this coded language tells you that they are trying to hide something of course interspecies compatibility is related to the type of presentation the mothers of species having a more invasive hemochorial placentation such as humans yeah like that one in parentheses, such as humans. Mm -hmm. Must create a stronger down regulation of maternal immune responses and are thereby more receptive to fetuses other 
of other species compared to those with endotheliochorial cats and dogs or epitheliochorial placentation pigs remnant ruminants horses whales where there's no contact between the maternal blood and fetal chorion okay so take this for example if you think of all of the ways that they constantly try to compare us to different animals pigs and monkeys specifically or baboons apes etc why are they doing that this is the reason they're trying to find a much more controllable and malleable creature that they can somehow do this disturbing uh, concept here too where they could basically grow like you would imagine growing a human inside of uh, a pig right it's impossible it's not going to happen but they keep trying to find ways to do it and convince us it's possible and everything else because we are to them only livestock and people who don't value their livestock or and not necessarily value just be looking for ways to advance it or, or change it or, or basically control it naturally i think most people who have a business and livestock are not this callous about how they do things because they don't want to actually damage and they want to be um, you know nice to their animals essentially because they spend so much time with them to cultivate them and stuff like that but with this particular structure the people who think they control the human cattle farm do not spend time among the humans, which is very obvious from the way that they talk. This is a lofty position of somebody who thinks that they're superior and are beneath the workaday lives of their cattle, essentially. Other potential hazards include incompatibility of nutrition or other support system. Notably, there's risk of inappropriate interactions between the trophoblast of the fetus and the endometrium of the mother. For example, the placental glycosylation pattern at the fetomaternal interface. <laughs> this, geez, all this code language is stupid. Should optimally be similar to that of the host species. They're not really hiding anything it's not hard to decipher what they're saying through all of their complicated language clearly this is written by some academician who is contemptuous of everyone else and likes to think of themselves as the controllers of the human farm so yeah the, the, their arrogance means that they think what they're they're hiding well they're they're not at all what they're talking about is a, a particularly disturbing crime but it's <laughs> it's uh it won't end well for somebody who thinks like this yeah for some species such as the bactrian camel embryo inside a dromedary pregnancy can be carried to term with no other intervention than the embryo transfer it's possible for gaur embryos inside cattle as well but with seer intrauterine growth restriction with uncertainty of how much is caused by the IVF procedure itself and how much is caused by interspecies incompatibility. So basically this short paragraph is saying exactly what I said before. It is impossible to take something that is not compatible and put it inside something else. You will always have a failure. That failure is usually highly damaging to the host person, individual, whatever, as we will find in the next paragraph. The ability of one species to survive inside the uterus of another species is in many cases unidirectional that is pregnancy would not necessarily be successful in the inverse situation where fetus of the other species would be transferred into the uterus of the first one for example horse embryos survive in the donkey uterus but donkey embryos perish in the uterus of an untreated mare deer mouse embryos survive in the uterus of the white-footed mouse but the reciprocal transfer fails and that's just with mice you know imagine trying to put a a mouse inside of a, I don't know, chinchilla. Completely different uh, bone structures and everything. Techniques. Overcoming rejection. Don't you like that, that title there? The person writing this knows exactly what they're doing. They know nobody would want this. So they have to constantly talk about, you know, going against stigma. The stigma of cannibalism. Methods to artificially stimulate just immune tolerance towards asinofetus include intercurrently introducing a component of a normal allogeneic pregnancy for example embryos of the species Spanish ibex are aborted when inserted alone into the womb of a goat 
or when introduced together with a goat embryo, they may, may develop to term. Well, in that case, you wouldn't have a Spanish ibex, would you? You would have a goat. So, yes, a goat inside of a goat. That's how that works. This technique has also been used to grow panda fetuses in a cat, but the cat mother died of pneumonia before she completed the term. Yeah, go figure. <clears throat> also, marine, marine embryos of Ryuku mouse will survive to term inside the uterus of a house mouse, only if enveloped in a mus musculus trophoblast cells. Goat fetuses have likewise been successfully grown in sheep wounds by enveloping the goat inner cell mass in sheep trophoblast. Such development can be created by first isolating the inner cell mass of blastocysts of the species to be reproduced by immunosurgery. And notice, by the way, they did not say whether or not the goat actually went to term in the sheep. They just say it as, and you you infer that it was successful, but in fact, it does it doesn't say whether or not these particular th examples it's giving were successful, and it also does not provide references. If you notice that, such development can be created by first isolating inner cell mass of bla uh, blastocysts of the species to be reproduced by immunosurgery, when the blastocyst is exposed to antibodies toward that species. Because only the outer layer, that is, the trophoblastic cells, are exposed to the antibodies, only these cells will be destroyed by subsequent exposure to complement. The remaining inner cell mass can be injected into a blastocell of the recipient species to acquire its trophoblastic cells. It has been theorized that the allogeneic component prevents the production of maternal lymphocytes sites, and cytotoxic antifetal antibodies, but the mechanism remains uncertain. On the other hand, immune suppression with cyclosporin has shown no effect for this purpose. Pre-transfer immunization with antigens from the species providing the embryo has promoted more rapid and uniform failure of the interspecies pregnancy in mice, but increased survival in horse-donkey experiments. Well, considering you have a mule, yes, a horse-donkey would probably work because we do have mules, which are crossbred. So there is obviously some sort of correlation between them. But then they try to correlate things that are not alike for obviously the ultimate purpose of doing it with humans because they cannot find anything that we are exactly alike in order for this operation to work. Embryo creation. Embryos may be created by in vitro fertilization IVF with gametes for a male and female of the species to be reproduced. They may also be created by somatic cell nuclear transfer, SCNT, to an egg cell of another species creating a cloned embryo that transferred into the uterus of yet another species. This technique was used for the experiment of panda fetuses, and I can't mention in techniques for overcoming rejection. In this experiment, nuclei from cells taken from abdominal muscles of giant pandas were transferred to egg cells of rabbits and, in turn, transferred into the uterus of cat together with cat embryos. Concomitant use of SCNT and interspecific pregnancy has also been sp speculated to potentially recreate the mammoth species. For example, by taking genetic material from mammoth specimens preserved in permafrost and transferring it into egg cells and subsequently the uterus of an elephant. Yeah, that won't work. Well, who knows? Maybe it might. It's sort of like the donkey horse thing. If it is similar, it should work, right? Thank you. If you have enjoyed this video, please uh, like it, share, and subscribe to my other channels. There are free books available at the links. And if you so desire, you may support my work at PayPal, Cash App, or any of the other options available. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my Discord channel that I newly created. And stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.